स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया I'm going to talk about the orbit counting theorem, which is also known as uh, Burnside's lemma. So the common way to motivate this is to use the necklace problem, which is what I shall do. So here's an example of the necklace problem. So I have a uh, uh, necklace uh, with four beads. So it looks something like this. And I can color these beads. So I can color some of them red and some of them blue. Okay, there's one necklace. Here's another one. And let me draw a few more. Oops. So all these necklaces I'm drawing have uh, two blue and two red beads. So what I'm allowed to do in this problem is I'm allowed to color the beads. So the question is how many different necklaces can I make? with four beads if I'm allowed say two colors say red and blue Now, what do I mean by different necklaces? Um, these two necklaces are really the same, right? Because if I just take this necklace up here and I just rotate it uh, counterclockwise by an angle of 90 degrees, then uh, this becomes this necklace. And if I take this necklace here and I rotate it either clockwise or counterclockwise by 90 degrees, then I get the necklace below it. So this is so the question is so the, these necklaces have a symmetry of uh, the group Z mod 4Z cyclic group of order 4 and what I'm really asking is how many orbits are there for this group action. Okay so these are really this and this necklace these are really different because the, no matter how I try to rotate this one it will never give me this one because in this necklace the two red beads are next to each other whereas here the two red beads are not next to each other. So no amount of rotation will allow me to go from this necklace on the left to this necklace on the right. So we can formulate this as a problem in group actions. as follows the group 
g equals z mod 4z acts on the set x equals all necklaces with four beads which are red or blue. And here when I say necklaces, I clearly think of um, these examples on the previous page as distinct necklaces. But now I have a group action and what I'm asking is compute the number of different necklaces means how many G orbits are there in X. Okay, and the theorem of Burnside is a very beautiful answer to this question. It says that the number of G orbits in X, so this is a completely general theorem. Huh? So now you assume that um, X is a finite set, maybe I should write down the hypothesis. X be a finite set, G a finite group, and G acts on X. Then the number of G orbits in X is a sum, an average actually, over G of the number of elements. And I'll just introduce this notation X superscript G, where X superscript G is the number of x in x such that gx is equal to x. So this is Burnside's theorem. So I'll give you a proof and uh, I'll explain how to, right, I'll illustrate how to use it for the necklace problem. So for the proof, recall, okay, that the size of G is the, so this is, remember, G subscript X is the elements of G such that G dot X is equal to X times the size of the orbit of X. G dot X is the set G dot X where G belongs to G. Okay, we had proved this in one of the earlier lectures. Okay, and I'll be using this later, so I'm just uh, saying recall this. Okay, let's start with the right hand side of the theorem. So we'll start with this sum g in g. X g. So what is this? Well, I can think of this as the number of pairs g comma x because the sum over all g I can think of the sum of pairs g comma x um, in g cross x such that g dot x is equal to x right if I fix g then I'm looking at exactly those x such that g dot x is equal to x but then if I sum over all g then I'm just looking at all pairs g comma x such that g dot x is equal to x. Okay, so that, now if I fix x, what do I get? So if I fix x, then the set of g uh, that, um, that uh, fix x is just going to be the subgroup g subscript x. So I can write this as sum over x in x and uh, the size of the subgroup gx. Okay, now I can write the sum over x as a sum over orbits. So I'll take all orbits in g mod x and uh, for all the elements uh, in, in, in orbit, okay, so here maybe first I should use uh, this fact that 
g subscript x is summation x in x and g subscript x is the size of g divided by the size of the orbit okay so now i'm summing over the orbits and then i'm looking at uh, y in g dot x and then i'm looking at cardinality of g over the size of the orbit of g dot y but since y is in g dot x g dot x is equal to g dot y so i can just write this as g dot x so although the sum is over elements y in the orbit of x it doesn't the thing that i'm summing doesn't really depend on um, on y so i can just say that this is counting uh, i can remove this sum and say just multiply by the number of elements in x and this cancels out and so i get cardinality of g times sum g dot x belongs to g mod x of 1 okay i had actually a mod g here i took it out but this is just cardinality of g times the number of orbits and now if you just divide both sides of this by cardinality of g you will get exactly burnside's lemma let's look at uh, the orbit counting theorem which is known as burnside's lemma so let's look at uh, this problem applied to um, necklaces so what's the group here so i'm looking at g equals z mod 4z and x is all necklaces now in this group the elements are the residue class is 0 1 2 3 and uh, these correspond to rotation by 45 degrees uh, 90 degrees uh, sorry by 90 degrees 180 degrees and 270 degrees respectively and this is just the identity element so now what we want to know is uh, given each element in g what is the number of so i goes from 0 to 3 and what we want to know is what is the number of uh, fixed points for each element i so let's take the identity element so we have any necklace uh, the identity element does nothing to it and it just keeps it fixed so no matter what colors i put for the beads um, they uh, it, it remains fixed so all possible necklaces are fixed by the identity element so how many um, okay so i'll just write this what we this is what we're trying to do so the term for i equals zero well i can color this bead either red or blue i can color this bead red or blue this bead red or blue and this bead red or blue independently so i get 2 to the power 4 which is 16 for i equals zero okay now suppose i have a necklace um, and I want to know I is 1 so that's like clockwise rotation by 90 degrees and I want to know what how many necklaces can I have okay suppose I color this red okay then after rotating 90 degrees this bead moves here so this also had better be colored red and this bead moves here so this had also be colored red and this should also be colored red so all the beads have to be red if the necklace should be fixed by a rotation of 90 degrees alternatively all the beads could be colored blue okay so we get two here corresponding to okay let's look at the case where we are rotating by 180 degrees so we are rotating by 180 degrees then uh, really if this bead is colored red then after rotation by 180 degrees it comes here so this bead should also be colored red 
and uh, but this bead can its color can be independently chosen it can be either blue or red and uh, similarly so 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 the, for this pair of beads i should choose the same color and for these diagonally opposite pair of beads i should choose another color so i have four choices totally i can either color these two red and blue and then independently i can choose to color these two red and blue so i get four and then um, the element uh, uh, three well that's a counterclockwise rotation by 90 degrees so it's very much like rotation by 90 degrees so again i get that and uh, that is equal to 1 by 4 times um, so 20 plus 4 24 and so I get 6 so there are 6 different necklaces with 4 beads and 2 colors um, we can try to write them all down just to get a full verification of this so firstly we there is only one necklace where all the beads are red There is only one necklace where all the beads are blue. There is only one necklace with one red bead and three blue beads up to rotation because okay. Wherever you put the red bead, you can get it from this necklace by rotating it by an appropriate angle. And similarly, there's one necklace where you have uh, one blue bead and three red beads. And then there are these two necklaces. Where are they? Uh, with with two red and two beads, two blue beads. So you have where the red beads are next to each other, and the blue beads are next to each other. And finally, the one where the red beads are opposite each other, blue beads are opposite each other. Okay, so we have we didn't need to do this because we proved the theorem, but we also manually verified um, the result of the orbit counting lemma in the case of uh, necklaces with four beads and two colors. Okay, one nice thing here is that uh, if you had three colors, then it would be very similar to this. Uh, you'd work it out. Uh, in each case, you'd have just a choice. Uh, instead of two to the power four, you'd have three to the power four here. And uh, instead of 2 to the power 1, you'd have 3 to the power 1. Instead of 2 squared, you'd have 3 squared and so on. And so with 3 colors, you would get, um, I'll just write down the answer. I'll let you think about it. You'd get 3 to the power 4 plus 3 plus 3 squared plus 3. So that's uh, 81 plus um, 6, which is 87 plus 9 which is 96 divided by 4 so um, that's 24 okay and you can do it with four colors five colors how many other colors you like okay um but uh, you know let me show you another example of necklaces and um, let's just make this problem a little more interesting so consider these two necklaces with six beads i'll put the colors in so i'm going to put red and blue beads again so here i'm going to put red 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 here I'm going to put red, red, red. Here I'm going to put blue, 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 blue. 
Okay, look at these two necklaces. Now, in this, if you go uh, clockwise, then after the single red bead in the necklace on the left, you have a single blue bead. Whereas here, after a single red bead, you have two blue beads. Okay, so no matter how much rotation, whatever angle you rotate the necklace on the left by, uh, you will never get the uh, necklace on the right. So, so these two necklaces are not the same. Uh, they do not lie in the same orbit of the cyclic group Z mod 6. However, these two are the same necklace really because if you take this necklace on the left, flip it over and put it down on the table again, you will get the necklace on the right. So these two necklaces are actually mirror images of each other. Right? If you reflect this necklace about the vertical axis, you'll get the other necklace. And so what we are saying is that maybe you know, the cyclic group of six elements is not the right group for the necklace problem. Maybe we should be looking at the dihedral group, D6. Okay, so let's try to do this problem with D6 instead of Z mod 6. Z. Because the choice is ours. We can decide. Uh, in our definition whether we want, it, want these necklaces to be the same or not. So this depends on whether you are allowed to flip over the necklace or not. So now if you are allowed to flip over the necklaces, we have to look at a larger group D6 with 12 elements instead of Z mod 6 Z which has 6 elements. So let me just remind you what this group D6 looks like. So it has, uh, it has 6 ref rotations and it has 6 reflections. So these rotations are just, you know, um, there's a rotation by 60 degrees, which I'll call R. Then you have R, R squared, R cubed, R to the 4, R to the 5. And then you also have the identity element. Okay, and reflections, well, uh, there are actually six axes of reflection, which I will draw for you. So the six axes are, there's an axis through these two vertices, there's an axis through this edge, then there's an axis through these two vertices, there's an axis through this edge, there's an axis through these two vertices, and there's an axis through this edge. So these are, um, I can number them for you, these are actually six different axes, one, two, three, four, by 6 and this is the same axis as 1 so this is 1 again so we have 6 axes of uh, reflection and we have 6 rotations and now to apply Burnside's lemma for each of these 12 elements in the group we need to figure out how many two color necklaces are fixed so we'll have 1 over 12 let's work with the rotations first so, um, for the identity rotation, all necklaces are fixed. So, we get 2 to the power 6. Then, uh, for the rotation by 60 degrees, well, all the beads have to be the same color, right? Because um, if, 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 say, uh, this bead is red, then all after rotation by 60 degrees, it comes here. So, this bead will also have to be red. And then this bead will also have to be red. And so, and so all beads will have to be red. So all beads have to be the same color. So you have only two choices. They all be red or they all be blue. Now if you rotate by 120 degrees and if this bead is red, then you won't get this bead, but you'll get this bead and this bead. So these three beads will have to be the same color and the remaining three beads will have to be the same color. But you can choose those colors independently. So you'll get four choices, two into two. And uh, if you do um, 180 degrees, then these two beads have to be the same color. Then these two beads have to be the same color. And these two beads have to be the same color. It opposite beads have to be the same colors. But you can choose those colors independently. So again, you get um, two into two into two, eight different colors. Then if you look at um, R to the four, well, that's just like R squared, except it's in the counterclockwise direction. So this will become 4. And R to the 5 uh, is, again, like 60 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. So there's 2. So this takes care of the rotations. 
and now the reflections well basically there are two kinds of reflections there are reflections which are about um, an axis which passes through a vertex so let's look at this reflection about the axis 2 for example then then uh, it takes um, this bead and this bead are interchanged under this reflection and this bead and this bead are interchanged under this reflection and this bead and this bead they can be different colors we don't care so so we have two choices for this bead independently of that we have two choices for these pair of beads and independently of that, we have two choices for this pair of beads and we have this so we have totally two to the power four right so that's uh, two to the power four for uh, reflection of the axis uh, uh, two the same holds for the axis four and the axis six so we get three into two to the power four and then there's another kind of axis which is like the axis one three and five for those axes um, these two beads are interchanged so this bead has to be the same color as this bead this bead has to be the same color as this bead and this bead has to be the same color as this bead okay but those colors can be independently chosen and there are three such axes so we get three into two cubed okay so that's one over twelve uh, two to the power six is let's see sixty four uh, plus two plus four plus eight plus four plus two plus so this is uh, three into um, sixteen plus eight uh, that's uh, twenty four so um, that's uh, seventy two here and uh, so that's sixty four plus um, 20 plus 72 so uh, 84 uh, 84 plus 72 um, and this, so the final answer is 13 so there are 13 um, different necklaces with um, with um, when you're allowed to with with two colors when you're allowed to also flip a necklace over now if you weren't allowed to flip the necklace over then you would only have these first six terms here but the group order would be six so you would get uh, uh for so this is with the dihedral group if you didn't use the dihedral group you would get one over six times 64 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 2 and uh, 4 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 and uh, that would be um, yeah. let's just see what that is with z mod 6 z you would get 1 over 6 times so basically the first 6 terms here 2 to the power 6 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2. So that's um, 20 plus 64 which is um, 84 by 6 which is um, 14. So not much of a difference here 13 and 14. Okay, so I think what this is trying to say is that the example that we have here is the only um, is the only example of two necklaces which are equivalent under the dihedral group but not equivalent under the cyclic group.